Okay, guys, I think we're going to get started now. Um, as always, thanks so much for being here for our fourth episode of Season 2 of Line Change with Coach Thomas. Uh, I know there's a lot going on. It's freezing cold outside, and there's a booster club meeting and everything like that, so we really appreciate you being here. Um, first thing I want to do is introduce our player guests tonight. We've got Stefan Timofeyev and Danny Caesar. Let's hear a round of applause for these two guys. Both of them had a, a very good weekend, I'd say, in very different ways uh, against the Peoria Rivermen, and we'll, we'll talk about all that um, pretty soon. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is ask Coach Thomas a few questions, um, and then we'll ask these two gentlemen a few questions as well. And then for my favorite part of the show, we're going to open the floor up for discussion. You guys can ask any question your heart desires, so go ahead and uh, start brainstorming whatever you want to ask uh, these three gentlemen up here. And then we're going to wrap the show up by sort of previewing the upcoming weekend we have coming up on Friday and Saturday night. Um, so, Coach, we're done with Peoria now, um, finally, uh, at least until January. Um, four straight games against those guys. That's a, a Herculean task for any team in this league to face. Um, how much of a learning experience is it to go through a series like that so early on into the season? Yeah, I think it's it's a good thing it's happening this earlier in the season than compared to last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's good for younger guys like Timo and you know some other guys that in our league kind of play that team and kind of see what it takes to, uh, you know, to beat one of the top teams in our league and what it takes to win in this league in general. So um, wasn't the results, obviously, we wanted, um, but I did definitely see a lot of positive stuff in those four games for sure. Um, we definitely showed we can compete with those guys, and um, you just can't take periods off or, you know, even if you take 10 minutes off in a game against those guys that can make you, uh, you know, it can make it real difficult on you. And uh, Like I said, hopefully for the young guys and for our whole team in general, we learn from it. Yeah, and, and that's how it felt. Uh, really, all weekend there were just uh, surges of mo- momentum, extreme surges of, of momentum uh, in both teams' favor at times. Um, how did you think the team responded on Saturday to a, a record-setting game in the penalty minutes department on Friday night? Um, I thought it was perfect. I mean, yeah. we... Outshot them twenty to four, I think, or something like that. And first period, yeah. Um, we we were hungry. We showed the kind of team we were capable of, and um, just couldn't just couldn't get it done. Uh, and that goes back to taking off a period or so. Um, you, you just can't do that. And I thought we had a great first, and then came back in the second, and I think we had three three hits that period, which you can't do that. I mean, you, mm-hmm. we had sixteen in the first, and then we come back and. And we have three in the second, so right. it's just all about continuing that uh, that pace and that energy that we showed in the first, and, and we would have been fine. So, Danny, I want to ask the next question I have to you. Um, you had a, a really big weekend on the score sheet. You got your first goal of the season, uh, got another one on Saturday night, uh, and you drove a lot of scoring opportunities as well. Do you feel that uh, things starting to click better now that uh, the season's a, a few weeks old? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I mean... We got a lot of guys gelling together. Um, we're doing a lot of line stuff in practice, just trying to get a feel for each other and how um, how the offense is going to go this season. So uh, for me, being a player in this league that's always put up points, it was kind of rough the first two weeks. Uh, I went through a little bit of adversity, and I, I felt like instead of trying to be more offensive, I'd just sit back and play more of a defensive game to try and help the team out. Mm-hmm. Um, going into that Peoria weekend at home, uh, I felt a million times better mentally and physically, and I had a lot more energy. Uh, I was excited. I was ready to, to help the team on offense again, and I felt like uh, I created a lot of opportunity to – uh, help the team do that. We finally scored a goal on those guys, so it felt pretty good. But um, honestly, it, whether I score another goal the rest of the year or not, all I really care about is the the points that get us ahead in the standings. So I, I just really hope we we start making a run here and move ourselves up the chain. Definitely. And Danny, you told me uh, shortly after you arrived in Macon late last season that uh, when you were with Knoxville, this was the one team you always hated playing against. Uh, why is that, and how does it feel now being a part of it, um, about to face off against your, your former squad in Knoxville this weekend? Well, once again, Macon has a really good team this year. Um, honestly, in the standings, it's not really showing what we're capable of. Um, I've always hated to play this team because they've always had great coaching, and the players just seem to follow through, um, whether it's... Uh, 
a run and gun game, whether it's a, an all out war on the ice, in the creases, in the corners, beyond the net, wherever it is uh, that the game's being played, like this team always brings it. And I feel like we can definitely do that. And we proved that uh, in the first period of that second game. And I just feel like, you know, if we could just continue to play the same way for a full 60 minutes, mm -hmm. I don't, we'd be 8 0 right now. So, um, Definitely this week of practice has been a lot different. It feels a lot different. Players are responding a lot better than uh, maybe before this weekend happened. Or uh, I feel like guys are starting to understand it, it's not always going to be a fun game. Uh, sometimes you just have to play a game that's completely boring, pushing pucks up the wall, getting it behind the D, you know, taking the body, hitting pin. Simple things, simple games are what win championships. So... Uh, I think now that everyone's kind of seen that, um, the more simple we play and the harder and more effort we put into it, I feel like we're going to start winning a lot more games. So, Yeah, without a doubt. And those 20 minutes that you guys uh, put forward on, on, uh, on Saturday against Peoria um, was probably the best period of hockey that I've seen played here in Macon since I've been here. Um, out shooting a team like that 20 to 4. Uh, just not getting a goal. You've got to credit their goaltender again, um, Jeremy Brodeur, who just seems to have our number this year. Um, so, Stepan, I'm going to ask this next question I have to you. Um, you were someone that the team was very excited to sign uh, over the offseason. You won Rookie of the Year last year in Elmira. Um, how have you liked playing in the SPHL for the past month or so after spending the, the better part of the past two years in the Federal League? Well, I'm, I'm just starting playing, to be honest with you, getting my confidence, everything is new for me, I'm trying to prove coach that I can play, but sometimes he come to me and said, you don't need to just do your thing, mm -hmm. you know, preseason games I was shaking before the game, taking it too serious, it's, yeah, but uh, it's faster, guys more uh, prepared for, like, stronger, we can say that, mm -hmm. um, Harder to get points, faster hockey, more physical. It's pretty good so far, learning a lot of stuff. And speaking of physical, um, I need to ask you about that scrap on Friday. Um, you, uh, you really went at it with Peoria goaltender Eric Levine. That's an understatement. Um, but shortly before he shoved you in the crease with his blocker, uh, you had been slashed and hit into the boards by Jacob Reichert probably 30 seconds earlier. There was no penalty called. Um, did that play any part in why you were so quick to go after Eric Levine, or was it just because of the way he shoved you in the crease there? Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe a little bit. It was part of mm -hmm. everything. Um, you know, it just happens. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, it's hard to blame you. It's uh, easy to see why you were frustrated in that situation. And um, a, a lot of people, I'm sure in this crowd here, want to commend you for what you did. So um, at this time, I'm going to open the floor up for discussion. The floor is now yours. Uh, ask any question your heart desires. The only thing that we ask is that you please do so into the microphone here. Uh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind just passing it amongst yourselves before you ask the questions, we just want to make sure that we all uh, hear your questions and it gets archived. Uh, mine really isn't a question. It's more of a comment, and it goes to Timo. When you cleaned that guy's clock, Levine, you definitely earned a spot on the Mayhem Wall of Fame. <laughs> Good job, man. Thank you. <laughs> so my question is for Leo. Uh, last year it seemed like when everyone was healthy, your scratch for that night would usually be like someone you'd kind of shift into that 10th forward role, whereas this year it seems like it's more of a full roster rotation of who sits if it seems like everyone's healthy. Uh, am I seeing that correctly? And if so, what prompted that kind of change in who sits for uh, any individual game? Um, I think this year we have, we've had more forwards kind of than we had last year. Um, so I'm kind of right now just kind of going through the two or three guys maybe that I think – are battling for a spot, like that 10th or 11th spot. So, um, you know, a guy like Davidson was playing in Peoria for that second game and um, felt like Lynch, Lynch and the other guy, um, Keplinger, kind of stepped up too. So 
it's those three guys. I'll continue to juggle that way unless I have to make another roster move here soon. But um, just kind of going with who. It, it also depends on who we're playing as well. If it's a team that's a little bit more aggressive or uh, fat, plays a faster pace, and I probably want somebody out there that's a bit faster and gets in on four checks and, and stuff like that. So. This is for Leo. Are they going to fine Peoria or anything like that for destruction of property? What? Were the, they um, the scratched boards. up our ladies' legs and everything? Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. Yeah. So The Ann Parman dasher in front of the visiting bench is all kind of banged up. Oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't see. I didn't even know about that. So I'll, I can look into that, but that's <laughs> the first time I'm hearing about it. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's intentional or not, but I definitely noticed it after this past weekend for sure. Oh, yeah, I had no idea. Timo, do you teach fighting lessons? <laughs> no, no, but if you want to, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Timo, is it true Russian machine won't break? Uh, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Danny, I was asked to hear your Bobby Boucher impression. Oh, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it unless I'm just in my own world <laughs> and you overhear me doing it so uh, maybe one day but uh, do you know about this coach? I have no idea <laughs> kind of want to hear it I'm now. sure if it ever happens again it will be captured and put online somewhere so I'm going to ask him tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> oh man Timo you're becoming an American citizen right? Yep. Could you talk a little bit about that? Um, right now I'm uh, getting my uh, medical exams, doing some uh, paperwork, and um, hopefully soon it's taking a long time, but I'm going to be able to get my green card and uh, hopefully going to live a happy life in the United States. <laughs> be proud American. <laughs> Uh, this question's for Timo. Um, being that Russian is your first language, is it difficult at times to communicate with players on the ice that are your teammates trying to just make plays and stuff? Uh, and if so, how do you try and overcome that? Well, it's most of the time when teammates talking with me, it's swear words. And that <laughs> was first what I learned in the United States. So, <laughs> of course, I'm joking. Um, maybe not. <laughs> I've been here four years. It's kind of easier, you know, than right now. I'm sitting here most of the time when I see lots of people listening to me. I'm saying I don't speak English, you know, but uh, you have to understand your teammates. So I'm trying to sometimes. Do you kind of serve as the translator on the bench for Oleg? Yeah, I'm trying sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably a few years behind you. And oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. I need Timo with, with all my <laughs> How does Mike's deal with the defenseman-only lessons? Yeah. <laughs> Grabs Timo. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I think there are a lot of people didn't know who Timo was until mm -hmm. Friday night. Now right. everybody knows who he is, and I've been reading all the comments, and I love all of them. You've been called... A chihuahua, a pit bull. Um, let's see, what other? I called you the Tasmanian de devil because he wouldn't let go. <laughs> but all of it was good. All of it. You're famous now. <laughs> Thank you. This is just another comment. 
The ECHL is highly overrated. You don't want to go there. You want to stay here. Stemming off of that, I guess, uh, ECHL-related question, Coach, did Minerva or Entma play at all this weekend? Do you uh, happen um, to know? Entma didn't play. He was backing up, and Minerva did play both games. So, mm-hmm. um, from what I was told, he played okay, and they're going to keep him up there um, a little longer, Minerva. Mm-hmm. Um, and Entma, I should hear back here soon, but he should be on his way back. So. Minerva is staying a little longer, but Entma should be back here. I know. I told him that too. So. <laughs> this is for Leo. Um, I know you said uh, Renee's back was bothering him Saturday night. Was is that still going on? Is that is that why you put him on the suspension instead of IR? Um, no. Unfortunately, he um, later that night I got a, a text message from him and he wanted to talk uh, in the morning, and I think he was just he got a little homesick. We had a great conversation. He was missing his family and stuff like that. So told him to, you know, go clear your head if you want to go home for a bit and kind of see if things change down the road. Um, you have a home here in Macon to come back to. And um, I kind of get where he, he was coming from, from being out that far in Manitoba. And, um, it's you know, it's kind of a culture shock for him, I think, a little bit. So, um, I, you know, just granted him that and, told him if he changed his mind to get back to me. So that was a reason for the I had to put him on team suspension. I just didn't want to let him go. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so that actually kind of leads me into my question that I was thinking about. Uh, around the league, there have been a lot of interesting team suspensions and stuff like that going mm-hmm. on. And was just kind of curious, in general, what are some things that can lead you know someone to get suspended like that uh, some general reasons that you've either seen other coaches do or that you've used or like, cause from our perspective as fans, we only really yeah, see no, guys that. suspended and not any real explanation as to why. So yeah. I was just curious, some general thoughts on, that. um, I mean, obviously for the other teams, I can't say what those other suspensions were, but you know, um, in ours, there was a kid who wanted to go home and, and stuff like that. But uh, other times it could be, you know, a player not getting along with a coach or, quits on the team can be family stuff um, having to finish which, school yeah having to finish school stuff like that um but for the most part it's something where the player decides he's either done playing or he wants to move on or you know what i mean or something like that so um you know usually if it's a family thing where you got to go home for a week or so it's just a brief leave that player gets like a week off and then comes back but Anything to do with suspension means, you know, a guy just doesn't want to be there and he's got to go home or, or stuff, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Good job with the questions and comments yeah. so far, guys. Anything else? Yeah, one more here because uh, I shaved my beard from Halloween. But uh, I did want to ask Danny while uh, he was here, yeah. uh, should I ever decide to grow it back? Because I got some pretty good compliments on it. Uh, what would be some tips? Because once I got to like, about half the length you are, I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, I really don't know. A lot of people that grow beards talk about how itchy it is or how hot they get or the only problem I have is when my mustache grows too big, it grows over my lip, and I tend to get food in it a lot, and I don't like it. <laughs> so I just shave that right now. But um, I don't mind mine. It never gets itchy. Um, I use this stuff called Stiffies. It's uh, something I found at um, Tennessee, uh, what's it called? I don't know. Um, it's just this little, this guy sets up a little stand and tries to promote his product, but uh, yeah, he showed it to me. It's the best stuff I've ever used, and I enjoy it. So I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. So last week we had Marcus Ortiz on, your roommate, and he said that uh, he loves rooming with you because of how clean of a guy you are. Um, I guess I'm just curious, how difficult is it to keep that beard clean? 
<laughs> um, well, it's tough when you sweat as much as I do. Yeah. And when I say as much as I do, I don't mean as much as a hockey player does. I mean as much as I do. Um, I noticed recently, since we haven't had ice, we've been doing team spin class. And around my bike, it looks like, you know, I'm on an <laughs> island. And there's a big old lake around me. Um, so I get pretty sweaty. The beard gets pretty, mm-hmm. it dries out pretty quickly. So I bring my product to practice with me. I put it in after I shower. Then I go work out, and then I have to shower again and put it in again. So it's kind of a process, but, you know, at the end of the day, I enjoy it. My girlfriend enjoys it, so (laughs) it's all that matters. (laughs) Yeah, it seems like she does enjoy it. (laughs) Uh, So in in practice, do guys, uh, I guess, go out of their way to avoid having to defend you with, you know, your, your island of sweat surrounding you all the time? Uh, well, I got all that equipment on top of it, so it, no. it doesn't get too bad. But, um, yeah, I think guys choose to defend against me, uh, <laughs> especially with the way I played the first two weeks. But, uh, no, this week's been all battles. It's been a lot of fun, and I, I just feel like, you know, it doesn't matter who you battle against. you got to give 110%, and I think we did that the last two days, and I think it'll definitely show this weekend against Knoxville, so. Yeah, that's right. So uh, just remember, guys, this Friday night against Knoxville is our first family four-pack night of the season. Um, That's a little bit different this year. For just $50, you get four tickets and then a $30 gift card at Texas Roadhouse. So if any of you are interested in taking advantage of that, we'd strongly recommend doing so. We'll probably only be able to do that promotion once a month or so uh, this season. Uh, And then it's also a whitey tighty toss. Um, That's, uh, for those of you who haven't heard, uh, that's going to benefit local charities. Um, bring whitey tighties. You can bring socks, gloves, just warm uh, clothing, essentially, that we're going to throw on the ice after the team scores its first goal, and it's all going to um, go to the DePaul Project for local charity and help them out. So, And then uh, Saturday, of course, is going to be our cancer awareness night. Any other questions, guys? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> Are they going to redo bike nights since it got rained out? Bike night. When they did the Harley night. Oh, I'm sorry. Bike night. What do you mean got rained out? It, it rained that they night. They had to bring the bike in? I was the only one that showed up on a bike. Everybody else, I'm not bringing it. It's raining. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. That, that just shows you how much of an island I'm at when I'm broadcasting. I don't even hear about these things. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's really unfortunate. I don't think they'll be able to redo it just because they'd have to cancel a different promotion in order to make that happen. But, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it's bad timing. All right, guys, uh, if there's no more questions, I'm going to move on to the last part of the show. We're just going to sort of preview the upcoming weekend we have coming up. And then, as always, we're going to ask a, a last trivia question that we have at the end. Um, you know, my clumsy self, I forgot to bring the puck this time. So uh, whoever gets the answer right will just have to either swing by our office or just get it at the next line change you come to. But I will make sure that uh, I get it signed by these two gentlemen. Um, so, Coach... Ryan Devine today, he was, uh, well, Sunday, he was officially activated mm-hmm. off the IR. We announced it today. Is he expected to play this weekend? Yeah, no, he'll definitely be in the lineup. Um, it's good for him that he got this full week of practice in and get his legs underneath him and stuff like that. So um, he'll definitely be in the lineup for sure this week. Great. Um, and he's somebody who uh, we think will play a huge part just because of, you know, the the injuries that we've had on the blue line and then the call-up with Nick Minerva and whatnot. So uh, we're looking forward to having him back. He's going to be wearing number 25, not 40, uh, going forward. Uh, Last question I have for you, Coach. We haven't seen the Knoxville Ice Bears since the playoffs. Uh, They've been in it every single game this season. They haven't lost by more than a goal through seven games so far. Uh, What's the scouting report that you have on them? Um, So far from watching video, I've only watched uh, their last two games. Um, You know, they're a very fast team. They, they come at you in waves. They're not going to be overly, overly physical or anything like that. But um, from what I see so far, they're just really, really fast. Um, they'll cheat. Um, but because they have that speed, they can get away with cheating a little bit. So hmm. um, we just got to play a full full 60, be disciplined, just because they're not that kind of team that's going to be kind of in your face and physical and stuff like that. So um, I'm not worried about our team speed, I know we can match it. It's just about doing it for a full 60 minutes. So, um, you know, over the next couple of days in practice here, we'll 
start getting into stuff that we'll probably use against them. And um, usually the day before the game, we'll show these guys video on their tendencies and breakouts and stuff like that. So um, we'll be prepared for them, though. Definitely. We're going to enjoy it this weekend. Uh, it should be a fun tilt on Friday. A lot of speed on the ice from both fronts. And then, uh, of course, Saturday against the Birmingham Bulls, a team that the Mayhem have uh, achieved their largest margin of victory against this season. President's Cup runners-up, always a good game with them as well. Um, okay, uh, the last question I have is always going to be a trivia question. Somebody's got to knock Sal here off his throne. He's won two weeks in a row. Um, it's going to be a tough one, though, so just brace yourselves. The trivia question is this. Stepan Timofey have played in the Commissioner's Cup Finals two years in a row with two different teams in the Federal League. Name those teams. You got one of them. Oof, oof, two people answered at once. <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Bill, you were, you were a second off. Sean got it. <laughs> You'll get one one of these days, man. You're close. But All right, congratulations, Sean. You can uh, pick up your puck, I guess, this week at some point from the office or uh, next week at line change. Um, but for now, that's all we have. We uh, hope you've enjoyed your meals, folks, and we hope to see you again next week. Thanks, guys.